this is cooking with Sonic Blue. And as you can probably guess, we're cooking with turkey, th turkey legs, not maracas. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to cook turkey legs. They come in a package that looks just like this. And you might think, oh wow, these are the biggest turkey legs I've ever seen. And I've never seen them this big on a turkey before because they're always gone. People always grab them right from you before you even have a chance to carve the dang thing. People are ripping and tearing and fighting over who gets the legs and who gets the drumsticks, the wings, the end pieces. Yeah, you, you heard it all before. But now you get to actually open a whole package uh, nothing of but. nothing but the legs. Yes, we're having turkey drumsticks today on Cooking with Sonic Blue. We are going to let these soak a little bit more in hot water because when you thaw out your turkey legs, make sure they are fully thawed. What might appear to be thawed might not actually be thawed because when you get to the bottom, they're still frozen. Although they were almost ready to go, so we're going to give this about 5 or 10 minutes in hot water to really get them thawed out. And they really have to be thawed before you can put them in the oven. Why do we do this? Because you don't want frozen bits in your oven. And I'll tell you why. Because if any part of your turkey was still frozen, when you think it's ready on the outside, it's still gonna be cold as hell on the inside or uncooked or undercooked. You don't want that on your poultry of any kind, shape or form, and that goes double for turkey. Sometimes so, even triple, right? Sometimes even triple. So now, these are ready. These are maracas. No, they're turkey legs. Not your stepping stone. Not your st Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no. Is there any prep that we're going to be doing? Like, are we going to be putting anything onto these turkey legs? Yes, there will be. So, it's not just toss them into the oven, wait a couple of hours, pull them out, and eat. You can if you want to. But we're talking very bland tasting turkey wing, turkey Legs. drumsticks, drumsticks. We are cooking these drumsticks tonight on Cooking with Sonic Blue. And look at how big and meaty these drumsticks Let's are. Do, a, do a, like a hand comparison, put like your, there we go. Look at that. Oh, look at this meaty guy. There you go. So, what you're seeing is not Brontus Burgers. They are not orders from Brontus Burger International like you see on the Flintstones. This you can make in your own kitchen and I'm going to show you how. So make sure that those chicken, make sure those turkey drumsticks are washed clean. You make sure you rinse them first and get all of that mucky muck and icky ick out of them and make sure that they are fully thawed because you don't want frozen bits in your oven as I stated before, that is a big no. If you can squeeze the turkey, you know. If you, can, if you feel mushy, it's thawed. But if it's still very firm, it's frozen. Leave it in there. But now that everything is ready to go, let's go to the next step. Now, you're going to need a cookie sheet. Cookie! Um, 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 um. Cookie no, Monster, no. that is not a cookie. Sorry. We take some foil, and what we're going to do with it is we're going to just string it across your cookie sheet like this. Now, I'm going to show you what we're going to do from there. I'm going to take some turkey drumsticks. You can use thighs, drumsticks, any part of the turkey you want, as long as they come pre-packaged, because you don't want the full turkey. If you want a whole turkey, that'll be a next episode. No, now, not next episode, episode, later episode. A later episode. What you want to do is go across like this. Make sure it's as dead in the center as possible. Okay, then go for your next one. And make sure it's nice and dry, not too much water. Okay, now, you want to form these to where you get the big, bulky, meaty side, and right next you to kind of want to put them together like that. Kind of like a figure eight type setup, huh? Kind of like that, yeah. It, it all works together like that. But you want to space them apart about a half an inch, a quarter an inch to a half inch apart. Here's number three. Nice, big, meaty one there. Yeah, I wonder who's getting that one. The cook? How about the cameraman? The cook always gets it. He's doing all the work. Gosh, you know, you make the, the cooks seem like they're not even there. Like the food magically appears cooked in front of you. That's why the chefs always get first dibs. You may have to move some of these over because you're getting awfully close to the edge, though. I am getting close to the edge, aren't I? So I am going to have to move this over here, over here, over here, over here, over here. 
Yeah. You should have just enough room for one right. last Numero one. Numero... Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. 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 <laughs> I almost said siete, but that's seven. That's seven. We don't have seven, we only have six. So, take your seis. Seis turkeys. Okay, I'm gonna take them. Let's move this a little bit down like that. And then just re-space them out. Okay. Perfecto. Alright, here we go. Good, 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 good. Now what we're gonna do is first we're going to butter, and this is real butter, 100 percent butter. Butter butter. Not margarine. Not margarine. You want butter. So we're going to brush some melted butter on our turkey. Now, why butter and why not margarine? Because margarine will not melt, does not have the melting consistency as butter does. You want flavorful, thick butter. Because margarine is a percentage of vegetable oil. And vegetable oil, when it's melted, does not very taste very good, nor does it have a coatability that you really need in your food. So try to get butter whenever a recipe calls yeah, for yeah, butter. Yeah. I'll get it. Okay. Just making sure you saw that. I'll get it. So and anytime a recipe calls for butter and does not say or margarine, get the butter. You will be pleased. And it will come in very handy in the kitchen. But if you do get butter, save it for the purpose of which you need it because butter is a little more expensive than margarine. I've been actually finding really good deals on butter recently. But I also get usually get like that one pound block which costs only like two bucks. Yes, look for the deals of butter in your grocery shops. And use the rest of that butter up. Just kind of coat it here in the hand, huh? Yeah. I mean we want to be generous with the butter, so just spread it on. Now will this help it brown out nicely or it will help with the flavor. For the browning, that's not going to happen until the uh, last part of cooking this. Okay. In the later part of cooking this, that's when the browning will come in. But what we're looking for right here is coatability and flavor. Because the next step is all about coating. Now, all you really need is just the tops. Because the butter will run over and under. And, and through. In and through. So I'll just take the rest of that butter and just kind of... Rizzle it where you can. Huh? Yep. Waste not, want not. Mm, so there you go. Those are nice coated turkeys. Now, you reach for the magic tool. This is Chef Paul Prudhomme's Poultry Magic, and it works wonders, let me tell you. Just a little sprinkle over the top of your turkey will make it taste dynamite, let me tell you. Now, if you don't have either A, access to, or B, funds for, what else can you use uh, to coat this turkey with? I will give you a formula that you can follow at home that you can make it taste as, if not as good as, it'll be good enough. So here's the formula. We, you need to take, now this is about, uh, you know, added to taste, so there's no real measurement here. But the ingredients, and you can add as much of it as you want to, in order, you know, for your tastes. Maybe you like a lot of paprika, maybe you don't like a lot of paprika, maybe you like a lot of cumin, maybe there's too much cumin in, in it as, as it is. <coughs> the formula goes as follows, and I actually have made my own. It's a tablespoon of seasoned salt as your base, and then half a tablespoon of cumin, half a tablespoon of paprika, half a tablespoon of thyme, and a quarter tablespoon of onion powder powder, and a quarter teaspoon of Garlic, okay. garlic powder. And you mix all that together, shake it well. It always helps to get one of these, a shaker that you can reuse over and over again. A reusable shaker. Yes, this is very vital in the kitchen, mm -hmm. especially when you mix all your seasonings together. And you don't have to add any more salt because the seasoned salt has plenty of sodium. Yeah. You can add just a touch of ground white pepper. I was about color. to say, I, I was going to say maybe a little pepper, white pepper. White Ground white pepper if you can get it. If not, black pepper will work, but it won't look very much, very good in the end. Well, maybe you won't even notice. But yeah. I prefer white pepper. Oh yeah. I don't know why, because it's it's more of a it seems to have, It also seems to have a better taste to it in my book. Yeah. So what you do at this point, now you got all of your turkey nice and seasoned and it's buttered. And look at all that. It's gonna make its own juices with the rest of that seasoning in there. Yeah. You see that? See so that. what we're gonna do is we're gonna preheat our oven and we're gonna set it to 400 degrees. I'm going to preheat wow. it to 400 degrees, and it's going to cook for about an hour and a half to two hours. 
So we're going to be waiting for a while for this meal. Now, while, that, while you're waiting for that to preheat, what we're going to do is we're going to get some more foil and we are going to basically make a fold out of this. Then carefully cover by, you don't want to touch your turkey. Basically trying to make a little cover without actually touching the bird. Exactly. This will help steam. Because the steam will rise, it will collect, and, and then it will go down drop again. right back down again onto your food. Thus, we'll make it instantly tenderized, your juices won't escape, and your steam will have room to breathe. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. We don't really want to touch the turkey because in the steaming process, this is where it counts the most. Okay, so now we're gonna carefully, now we got our second piece over there, we're gonna carefully fold this over like this. Very carefully, you don't wanna squish anything down, you don't wanna disrupt the now dome that you've built over your turkey. But you wanna be able to form a vacuum seal to seal all of that steam in there as best as you can. And that's why we built this sort of canopy over the top of your turkey. This makes a steam box, basically. Basically, yeah. That's what you do. And there you go. So, yes, you're going to have a lot of steam escaping out the sides, but a lot of it is going to be trapped in there, and it's going to help flavor your turkey and also provide the juices it needs. And when that mixes together with the Chef Paul Prudhomme seasoning, or my formula of seasoning, then it'll mix together well. Your turkey will just suck that flavor right up into it, and you will be blown away about how nice of a meal this will make. Is it now, done yet? No, we haven't even started yet. Oh, uh, because they are making me hungry. <laughs> I know, I'm making me hungry too. And I'm the host, what do you expect? We're also going to have this with Julian fries. I decided to, or Julian potatoes actually, I decided that enough time went by that I was looking at these boxes in the cupboards for the longest time. We had them over at the Miller address and I decided why not break these out and have them with our turkey. These go great with turkey. So. We're going to make julienne fries, and the way you make these is follow the simple directions on the back of the box. On the back of the box it says, please stop playing with your food, you're not Davy Jones. No, no, it actually it says. Because <laughs> <laughs> how would the food know that I was trying to be like Davy Jones playing the maracas? Fortune cookies. Fortune cookies and tell everything. But they also tell some bizarre things. Yeah, like what is H2O? Yeah. <laughs> that one still baffles us today. Yeah, that's one even Confucius wouldn't even write. He's like, wait a minute, that one confused me. I'm not Confucius. What I say goes, and that is confusing to me. So we are going to add two cups of milk and four cups of water. So we are going to get four cups of filtered water. Don't you wish you had one of these pure devices on your faucets? They really do do a, make a world of difference sometimes. And how many times have you had to replace that since you moved into here? None. None? None. We never had to replace that once. But we will soon. And we have a little indicator around here that will start blinking when it's ready to be changed. It'll start to break, like red. You're, orange. you're almost full. And four cups of water into the measuring cup now. All of you out there, I know you like to hold up the measuring cup like this whenever you got liquid in there, try to look at it, but don't do that. Don't do that. You put it on a level surface, and that way it helps you measure what, how much you have and how little you need. So I just kind of take that out and just set it on a flat surface. And that Let it will... sit for a little bit. Just go through there. So let it sit just a little bit, and let it stop moving, and get down and look. And hey, you can see hey, it is level get, with four cups. Get because, level with the line. Yeah, because if you stand up here, it looks like, oh, you're over four cups. But when you get down here, oh my goodness, I'm exactly where I need to be. So don't be afraid to become one with your measuring cup. And now we're going to take four cups of water. It's supposed to be boiling water, but it doesn't really matter because it's all going into the oven anyway. Mm -hmm. So why does it have to be boiling? Well, for one reason, it helps cut this up a little better. But that's all. You put the butter in, it's gone. So I like to use tap hot water, mainly because it doesn't turn the butter into vapor. And even though it says at four cups of boiling water, and this is the same pretty much in any uh, recipe like uh, like uh, uh, al gratin potatoes or any scalloped potatoes that you would make, you always have to use boiled water 
and then add the rest of your ingredients. And I say, well, if you're going to add butter to that, that butter is going to turn into vapor. So if you do it slow enough and slow cook it, you still get all the flavor, you get the thickness of the butter, the flavor, everything that goes with it, and it turns out a little more delicious. A little tip that I've, I've discovered actually along the way. Uh, now we need two cups of milk to add to that. So let me grab the milk and get all, excuse me, this in because, yeah. We put this in the freezer and it's still got little ice chunks in there. Yeah, I just pulled out one of our gallon bottles out of our freezer recently and it's still quite solid. Yes, and it's still drinkable too. Oh yeah, that's still good enough. Even though it says January 8th, the beauty part is you put this in the freezer and it keeps a lot longer that way. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to keep this and for cooking purposes, it's perfect. So add your two cups of milk, one cup per box. And there you go, now you have plenty of room to work with. So let's go ahead and get our first, I like to start off with the powder. Since you want to dissolve the powder first before you add any noodles or any potato or any you know, other ingredient, you just basically want to work with the liquid and then how and, and that's one of the things I like to do too. Yeah. Because you, you don't have to like slosh everything around, you don't have to worry about the powder clunching up right, in the area. Right. And having those noodles and potatoes and all that other stuff depends on what you're working with. Having that in there, it just kind of helps grab some of that up before you're even dissolved. Oh yeah. Whisk that puppy up. By using the whisk, it'll help break down those clumps. Yeah. So, use that whisk. To your advantage. And whisk your liquid. Now, there's going to be still some clumps here and there, but that's okay. There it goes. That's okay. It's just extra flavor. Now, we're going to break open our Julian potatoes. If you can. That's why having scissors. Kitchen shears also helps. Mm -hmm. I always have a pair of scissors or shears relatively handy. And there's the first bag of Julian potatoes. Now, take that whisk that you casted away to the sink and stir in your Julian potatoes. Whether or not they're named Julian is not your concern. What is your concern is how good they will be when they are done. Now, they're well stirred in. Now, our turkey has yet to go into the oven because our oven is now preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm. And we're just gonna take this tray, this vessel of good flavoring, and slide her in there. Okay, now basically what we're gonna do now is we're gonna slide that turkey in, let it cook for an hour and a half, and then in the last 30 minutes, we're gonna check on it, we're gonna lift up the top, and we're gonna let it cook the rest of the way. We're gonna crank up that temperature to 450 degrees. And then that's when we're gonna slide in our julienne potatoes and let them cook for about 25 minutes or 20 minutes, depending upon how well they cook. When they're done, you'll know it. When the top is nice and crispy, that's when they're done. So we're going to take that into the oven in consideration. But first, we're gonna let these cooked turkeys kind of cruise along at 400 degrees. Oven mitt. Other oven mitt. Are we ready to pull our turkey out of the oven now? I don't know, are we? I think we are. Let's take a look. It's been an hour. And I can easily see oh. that this particular turkey, if you start to smell your turkey, and I took a little peek, an hour is plenty of cooking time for your turkey, because I'll show you why. Is it already browned up, too? It is. Ooh, wait till you see this. Are you ready for the big unveiling? This is what butter and seasoning it does to your turkey. Ta da! Oh, Look wow. at that. Notice how it's pulled away from the bone here? Your turkey is done. And look at all the drippings. You can actually save that. That's broth. That's really good turkey broth. Now let's slide in our chili and potatoes. Or if you do like mashed potatoes, you can make a very good gravy with that. Yes, you can. Now let's put in our chili and potatoes. And what we could also do is on the lower part of the oven, let's bring that to 450. And then, Okay, the original formula that we stated was to let it cook for about an hour and then put the julienne potatoes in, but that turkey looks about good as done. Now, best way to test how succulent your turkey is to stick a meat fork right in the, Now, look at that. See that? I didn't even stick it in far and look at the juices coming up. See that? That's how you can tell how succulent it is. Just stick a meat fork at the very, very tip. You see that juice coming out? That means that your turkey is so juicy on the inside that there is no stopping your hungry guests when they get and do that turkey. There is never going to be another dry turkey in the house. 
Now, let's take a look at this piece over here. This one looks a little dry, but as you can see, it's got a lot of juice in the middle. I see? still see a lot of juice coming out of there, yeah. Yeah. So, let's test its softness. Let's get into a nice meaty piece right here and just push that meat fork right in there. Now, if you're not sure if it's done all the way, would it be a safe bet to, like, do a quick cut into it? Oh, well, oh, wow. the best That's way like you can geyser. tell. Yeah, it did start spurting, spurting up like a geyser. The best way to tell is to basically just down here. If it starts pulling away from the bone here, then you know your meat is good to go. So that means that you won't have any pink. You won't have any undercooked turkey. This one's Jeez. real juicy. Look Jeez, at that you one. barely touched touch that. It. Look at that. It's just crying. Look at that. You see? Now, that is how you get your turkey legs to look and taste their absolute best. But we're still not quite done yet. We still want to make this part a little crispy because, as you see, it's very juicy. So what we want to do is we want to cook these julienne potatoes for about 10 minutes, maybe even 15, give or take. And then we're going to slide that turkey in at 450 degrees for five to seven minutes and cook them then and let it get a little bit of crispness on the top of it. And we're going to let it cook in its juices here, but by bringing the sides of your foil up, you ensure that no juices escape. So that way it cooks in its own juices. And by putting this over your turkey, we stated that it creates a steam pocket for all of your steam to come up and then come back down. And basically doing that will ensure that juices won't make your turkey too dry. And this won't have any, uh, this will have plenty of room for your steam to, to, to form and then dissipate. Condense again. And then, and then imbue itself back into your turkey. So that's basically how you're going to keep it moist and also flavorful too. But we've taken an extra step and added those seasonings. And if you followed my, uh, my recipe on how to make your own seasonings, then uh, definitely send me a comment. Let me know how it turned out. So, yeah, keep that handy too because you can use it in a lot of things. You can use it in turkey, uh, chicken, you can use it in pork chops, you can use it in steak if you want to, fish. fish. The, the possibilities are endless. Oh, it I've, great. I've known people to make their own uh, seasoning like that and use it on their fries. Oh yeah, fries, crab cakes, if you have uh, lobster, use the seasoning on your lobster. It can use for anything, just like Old Bay. It can go with anything. Even chips, if you have plain chips, shake them, you know, make your fresh, fresh chips, shake them with a little bit of that seasoning in there. So we may have to do that one of these days. tremendously good. I used to do it all the time with Old Bay, and I would do it again to this seasoning. That's how really flavorful that seasoning is, and the smell will really get you. I'm hungry. Uh-huh, yeah. Well, unfortunately, though, we did not use my seasoning, but we did use seasoning from a dedicated genius, Chef, Chef Paul Prudhomme. And I declare, I declare Chef Paul a genius when it comes to mixing seasonings. He is a very bona fide genius. Not saying that I'm not, not saying that I am, but Paul, but Chef Paul Prudhomme has, has it over me, let me tell you. So, just give your turkey an extra basting with some of the drippings here. And keep this top moist. But when you put it in the oven, we're gonna get it to be a little crispy, but it's gonna maintain its moisture if you follow this. And there you go, just keep it nice and moist. Give it a good couple of dosings of drippings. Just like that. And there you go. Now, those tops are really moist. So, let them stay in the moisture there. And we're gonna come back in about 15 minutes. We're going to check on our julienne potatoes, we're going to slide in our turkey for one final time, and in five more minutes after that, we're going to have dinner. Ooh. Now look, you see? They're still moist looking. Look at how moist they look. Oh, yeah. Now. Nice little sheen, like right around, like that one right there. Yes. Now, let me put these away and do a little now. test with the turkey. Now, take your meat fork and once again, lightly poke. Oh, yeah. I see moisture. It's juicing up, eh? Uh-huh. Yeah. Actually, let me try to penetrate one and see if I can get one. There we go. There we go. See? It's coming out. See that? So, your turkey is still juicy on the inside, so don't worry, because you still have beautiful turkey. And we're going to serve this right up. And everybody can have two. This one's nice and seasoning. Mm-hmm. And look at that. That's going to come right off the bone. Look at that. Oh. We can now get, it, get right it off of the aluminum. Thin there we go. Yeah. Okay, now look at that. That's gonna come right off of there. Look at that. Put some While we're waiting, 
put some of that over the meat that's on the plate. Top, just drizzle it right over the plate. We still have our turkey baster here. So what we're gonna do with these drippings, we're just gonna drizzle it right on the top of the turkey. Just like that. Oh, oh, oh. Just a little bit like that. Nice presentation there. Make your dribbling, drippings. Dripplings. Dripplings, dribblings. Whatever you want to call them. Right? Just drizzle it slowly right over your turkey. And look how slow you can drizzle. And it makes a lovely, juicy, delectable presentation for anybody who's waiting for this dish. And they will love it if you do it exactly the way we do it here on Cooking with Sonic Blue. Oh, now that is julienne fries. Look at that. With julienne potatoes. potatoes. That is julienne potatoes. Okay, that is how your julienne potatoes are supposed to look. So all you need to do now is just to let this sit and let it quit more, bubbling. More waiting? <laughs> Screw waiting, I want to dig in. Wait, maybe... What, we can put them into small bowls so that... Wait. I'd say they're about done. They are. Yeah. They are ready. Look how creamy that is. We forgot to add the butter, but that's okay. I don't think... We have plenty of butter. We have plenty of butter as it is. Because we use a lot of it in spreading our turkey. Remember, butter, you don't want too much of in your system. So having too much butter might be too much of a good thing in tonight's recipe. So, you can leave out the butter. It just makes it less creamier. You'll have to cook it a little bit longer to get that creaminess achieved. Mm -hmm. But it will be achieved. Well, so I... Patience is a virtue. Run the wolf, are you ready to experience the food that we have been waiting all night for? Yes, yeah, about 40 times. I'm gonna try a bit of this turkey. Oh God. <laughs> that is good. It is it, now try it right off the bone there. Mm -hmm. It's cool enough that I can handle it. Yep. Not too dry, not too tasteless. I don't think you can get enough of it, folks. It is a very good flavor. Now, what would you rank this as on the other dishes that we've had here at Cooking with Sonic Blue? It is really good. It is really moist and succulent. It's melting your mouth. And I still can't get enough of it. <laughs> wow. That Julian potato is so ready, I could stick a fork in it. Remember that chili commercial? It'll stand up to the taste. Yeah, I remember did that. that commercial anyway. That was some I, chili. I don't, I don't remember. Of course, the Julian potato. Still very hot. Yeah. Oh, hot, hot, hot. Hot. Mmm. But tender. But tender. Mmm. Good. And now, how about a nice bite of that turkey leg? Oh, I'm looking forward to you. Been having my eye on you, baby. You know, this kind of reminds me of those turkey legs that you can get at like a um, medieval fair. Not the same flavor, but the texture that you're getting. Mm -hmm. Almost like those mutton chops. Yeah. Wow, that is good turkey. And you can really taste the Chef Paul Prudhomme seasoning. Or if you made my seasoning, and I hope you do, because please let me know how it is, because I have yet to try my own seasoning on this turkey. But Maybe if next you time. Have, we'll try that next time. But if you have, though, definitely let me know and put a comment in telling us uh, how, how well you did in your home. And we'll go from there. Well, yeah, we'll go from there, but this is really tender, juicy, succulent turkey. Why don't you wrap it up then, Sonic? Well, I would wrap this up, but I'm still hungry, so... Well, I'm no, 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 I mean the video. We're going to wrap the video up, okay. Well, okay, here, let's, let's take the boil. I'm going to wrap the video up, so this is Sonic Blue Dark Vault saying goodbye and our video saying... What are you doing? I'm a monkey. Um... Daydream, believe the ends of homecoming queen. Um, um, hey, Ringo. That, Ivy Jones. That, that I don't care who you are. The, those Ivy Jones. No, the, those are turkey legs. Those oh, turkey legs. Yeah. We oh, eat. Oh, is, isn't that isn't that funny? Oh, I thought they were maracas. No. Cheer up, sleepy Jean. Uh, um, oh, what can it mean? Sonic, stop to, uh, embarrassing yourself. What? <laughs> we need to cook them. You need to cook me maracas. No, turkey legs. Not oh, the turkey legs. Oh, I thought it was because it was short. 
Oh, I could fly beneath the wings of a blue... Hey, you know what? If the monkeys were ever poor, this is what they would use for instruments. I'm sure, but why don't you actually introduce yourself? No, I am not Davy Jones. No, this is not the monkeys' uh, tryouts. No, this is not a screen test. Drumsticks. I no, 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 Put it down. Put them down. Okay. What did your mother say when you were a kid? Never play with Don't eat that cookie dough. Um, don't tease your sister. Uh, your brother is the owner of the house when I'm gone. And uh, for God's sakes, don't lick your fingers after you use the toilet. Um, how about don't play with your food? Oh, she never said that. He never told you not to play with your food? It's the bombs! <laughs> Boom! Are you serious? Water, water everywhere. And not a drop to drink. Thank old you, Mariner. I just want to drink that. Thanks I always the, thought that was Old Man in the Sea. That's the Great Mariner. Same thing. Great Mariner started out that way. No. Water, water everywhere, and not a drop to drink. Came from the Great Mariner. Oh, I could fly. Sonic. Sorry. Hey, hey, I'm a monkey. People say I monkey around. Yes, we know, <laughs> but that's... But... There's a little pile there. Okay, which one of you is Julianne? Which one? Which one? Are you Julianne? Are you no, Julianne? No, I think that one's Juliet. Juliet. Well, I wanted Julianne potatoes, not Juliet potatoes. Julianne, is that you? Is that you? I think I see you in there. Are you? Are you okay? Are you? I'll get you out of there in just one minute. Okay, just hang on tight. Kitchen cheers to the rescue. Open bag of Julianne's potatoes. Okay, Julianne, you're free. Go, go. And now drowning. They're now drowning. I'm sorry, Julian. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was just part of the recipe. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey. And that's when we'll slide in our Julian potatoes and cook them at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's going to be a wonderful meal. I thought and it was 450. Okay, so what we're going to do is take two. Sorry. Okay, so what we're going to do here is. We're going to slide that turkey in for about an hour and a half, then about a half an hour into pulling them out of the ref uh, refrigerator. It's an oven! Take three! Take three! Beep! Okay. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to let this Kirk, 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 Captain Kirk, beam it up. It's not ready yet. I want it done now. Okay. Take four. Okay, now, it is 20 minutes till, 20 minutes till 11. You guys eat at 20 minutes till 11? No, we start cooking at 20 minutes till 11. We don't eat until one o'clock in the morning. But if you put the meat fork, the I meat brought fork it over for you. Is, meat fork is in Meat Forkville, I don't know. It's in here somewhere. Mm, Margaritaville, maybe. I don't see it over there. Oh, no, it, I think I see it's it. It's still in here, okay, here it is. I did use it recently. Okay, here's the meat fork. I got my oven mitts ready, and I can't wait to get my mouth around these legs. In five minutes alone in that oven with the Julian potatoes, and everything will come out perfect and wonderful and succulent and juicy and tasty and moist and delicious. God, stop me now because I'm hungry! <laughs> well, don't worry. We'll be eating very soon. So you just Try not to think about the goodness that's going to come out of that oven. That succulent, juicy, melts Mouth, in your mouth. Mouth watering. Oh, I can't stand it! I can't stand it! <laughs> hey, Sonic. What? Is it done yet? No, it's not done yet! <laughs> How about now? No. Ugh. But that's okay. We can find something amusing to do with this blueberry pie. I can't smell any blueberries, man. It smells like turkey. It does. It does. Everything yeah. smells like turkey. It's like, oh, my life has smelled like turkey right now, and I love it. <laughs> well, about another five minutes. Five minutes? Five minutes. Five minutes? Five minutes. Five minutes? Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, five minutes. I can amuse myself in five minutes. I can... Jumping jacks. No, that might hurt my back. I can do the dishes in five minutes. Do dishes? Really? Well, 
yeah, I'm still my dad. Hey, Rocky, Rocky. Um, Muhammad Ali. Either, I don't care, food. Flow like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Ain't nobody gonna get in the ring with me. Um, how about... I'd like to show that I admire your style, but you better watch my fists. They're gonna be around for a while. <laughs>